Hi, I'm Rocky Anderson, and I so wanted to join you tonight for the screening of this remarkable documentary by Eugene Jarecki, who was the perfect person to tell the story, as he was the perfect person to tell the story of the military-industrial complex in his award-winning film, Why We Fight. But I was called away. I'm going to be speaking about eco-sustainability in China at the same time. So I was really glad to be able to have just a couple of minutes to speak on film to address an issue that has been of huge concern to me for decades. Uh, I became aware of what was going on in Utah's prison system many years ago. I sued the prison system successfully several times. I got to know a lot of the inmates. In fact, I, I had an inmate live in my home after he was released. And the one thing that was made really clear to me is that we as a society, as a culture, in our names, we approach the dealing with those who offend against our laws in the most self-destructive, inhumane, barbaric ways. It's the most expensive way. We incarcerate more people per capita than any nation in the world. 2.4 million people behind bars today? It's applied in a racially discriminatory fashion. There is no question about that. It's applied in an economically discriminatory fashion with the vast majority of people behind bars in this country that are functionally illiterate. They haven't had the educational or the, the, the job opportunities the rest of us have had. We're spending more on each inmate than what tuitions are at most of the finest universities in this country. Imagine if we put the resources in at the front end, providing good education, good job training, good job skills, good job opportunities, and creating the conditions for support groups. Because everybody needs friends and family, people who will love them and support them. What do we do with people who are behind bars? Just about everything we can to destroy those support groups. It used to be in Utah. If you were within telephone range, they could pick up a phone and just call you from the prison. Now there's this convoluted, expensive system where if they're going to call somebody, that the person on the other side has to, first of all, be signed up for the program, and accept the, the charges. They have to pay as if these were long distance calls. And part of the revenue from that goes back to the prison. It's an insane way that we have of destroying those support groups. They treat visitors at the prison like they're animals. It's not second rate, but third or fourth rate human beings. They make it as difficult as they can, and now they're talking about moving the prison, which is completely unnecessary, to some even more remote, more remote place, which is going to make it more difficult for people to visit. And then they're talking about privatizing the prison. So I mean, we have the slavery system in place. There's a guy in, 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 and this is a common story, by the way. These aren't extraordinary stories. This is just one of many of these stories. And Matt Tybee wrote about it in Rolling Stone recently. Under their three strikes and you're out system. He'd been in a little trouble with the law before, uh, hadn't had opportunities growing up, basically orphaned, growing up on the streets. Well, he shoplifted one pair of tube socks. That was his third strike, and he is in prison for life. It'll be a cost of more than a million dollars to taxpayers to keep this man in prison because he was busted for stealing tube socks. 
And then he's paid, I don't know, it's a, a few cents per hour for the work that he does in prison. And he's paying restitution of several thousands of dollars for that one pair of tube socks. And the work that he's doing for a few cents an hour, now that money will go toward his restitution. It is a slave system that we have in place. We're growing the numbers all the time. In California, they spend more money on their prison system than they spend on education. This is what we've become in this country. Heartless, barbaric, and utterly stupid, even when it comes to our own, our taxpayers' interests. And certainly, when most of these people come out of prison, they're less equipped to lead productive, law-abiding lives than they were when they went in. So we're not even taking the opportunities to do the right thing with them when they're in prison. So you'll see a lot of the facts, and, and it's an it's a inspiring, enraging story that you'll see in this documentary. And I'm glad that you're here to see this. I hope you'll spread the word, but don't let it stop there. Quit pointing fingers at those that we elect. Point the fingers at yourself because it's up to every one of us. We'll never see changes unless we demand those changes. That's how it works in our society in every major progressive movement. It's been because of committed, tenacious people at the grassroots who have gotten out and let those in power, know that they weren't going to give up until they prevailed. And so it's time in this country, end the drug war, treat all substance abuse, tobacco, alcohol, all drugs, treat all substance abuse as the health, public health and education issue that it is. Get it out of the criminal justice system. Regulate it, tax it like we do other substances. But the, the, the interdiction efforts, the interference in other nations' affairs, the creation of so much violence as we're seeing along border towns, like Juarez in Mexico, the thousands of people who have been killed, that's attributable not only to the market in this country for these drugs, but it's attributable to our laws because what, what did we see after we ended prohibition against alcohol? The mob. They didn't have that source of income anymore. They didn't have control like they did at the time. The same thing would happen. The greatest opposition to ending the war, so-called war on drugs in this country, would come from the drug cartels because they've got the very most to lose. So we as the American people, we know it's failed. The 70 percent of Americans in the polls say that they know that the war on drugs has been a failure. Let's stand up as American citizens and demand of our elected officials and let them know there will be a political price to be paid. We will not vote for them unless they commit, end the drug war, take all substance abuse out of the criminal justice system, and do what we can to find alternatives to incarceration because we have a whole spectrum of options that make great sense for dealing with people that don't include, except for those who are the most dangerous, incarceration in jails and prisons. People can be out doing community work, they can be paying taxes, supporting their families, keeping up those support groups, and we as a society can get away from the barbar barbarity, from the cruelty that is implicit in the way that we deal with those who offend against our laws. So when you leave this film tonight, I urge you, don't just go away shaking your head and complaining and pointing the finger at somebody else. Take on the responsibility to organize, mobilize, and in your own way, in your own communities, in your homes, your churches, your schools, amongst your friends, start making 
the kinds of demands on our elected officials where they will feel the heat and understand we won't stand for it anymore. Thank you very much.